rich high pressure nozzles should you buy for your high pressure aeroponic system that is cheap and you know will produce 50 microns in droplet size. Stay tuned, you'll find out. It's not easy finding the right nozzle for your high pressure aeroponic system. If you want one that's not expensive and you want one that will guarantee you 50 microns in droplet size. If you go on Amazon and other resale distributors, they sell nozzles, but they don't have the specs that identify what those nozzles produce. So there's no way of you knowing for a certainty that those nozzles will produce 50 microns um, or less in droplet size. Yeah, what can we do as high pressure aeroponic builders that our nozzles are, are producing 50 microns? In this series, I evaluated five different nozzles and from various manufacturers. Now, one of the nozzles, I was disappointed greatly. It has failed totally when it comes to producing 50 microns in droplet size. That one nozzle that I'm disappointed with was actually the very first nozzle that I used because the supplier basically told me these nozzles are um, used for high pressure aeroponics. After my evaluation, that is not the case. As a matter of fact, I went back to the uh, company's website and I noticed that one of the um, customers responded back saying that I doubt the quality of these nozzles match up to be a high pressure aeroponic nozzle. Another thing too that was kind of interesting um, about this manufacturer is that they have been around for many years and they say that they kind of like set the standard when it comes to high pressure aeroponics. So after my evaluation, I recommend that you stay clear of this manufacturer when it comes to purchasing their nozzles. Now the equipment used to measure droplet size from spray nozzles um, are very expensive. You're talking about in the tens of thousands uh, for some of these pieces of, of instruments. They use uh, lasers uh, and some use multiple lasers to measure the droplet size. It's not easy trying to find a nozzle to use um, for your high pressure aeroponic system if you're on a budget. Now, you probably noticed that in my nozzle video series, I did not really recommend which nozzle to buy. Why is that? Well, the nozzle that I'm using in my high pressure aeroponic system, um, they will not sell to private individuals, meaning that they're not a retail shop. They are a wholesaler. So they will only sell to uh, companies and those who actually resell their product or you can buy them through different um, salespeople. Because of that, they mark up the price substantially. So I pay roughly about $1.50 to um, $1.30 for a nozzle in my high pressure aeroponic system. And I want you to have the same deal. So to do that, what I decided was to go through nozzles and see if I can evaluate them myself to verify that they produce uh, 50 microns when it comes to um, the droplet size. It's kind of a, a challenge because I cannot afford the equipment that is used to um, measure the droplet size from these nozzles. We're talking about something that costs tens of thousands. Um, and basically, they use a technique of um, lasers. Some use multiple lasers. So what they do is that they aim these lasers through um, a group of water droplets. And based upon the, the way that they like, diffracts off of these drops, 
they can determine the size of the droplets. Another thing uh, some of them do is that they use multiple lasers and based upon these uh, lasers they're able to um, measure the, uh, the Doppler effect which is like a delay in the light instead of delay in echoes um, to determine also the size of the uh, droplets. Um, so I definitely can't do that. So I started to thinking, well, I have nozzles that are certified to reduce 50 microns in droplet size. What if I compare the mist coming from those nozzles to those that are lower cost, um, inexpensive, but don't have any specs? There's no specs from the manufacturer. They're like a generic brand nozzle, you can kind of say. Can I use that to verify that these lower cost nozzles are comparable to the ones that are certified? And that's what I will be doing in this video. I was thinking, how can I compare the mist from one nozzle to another nozzle? We gotta remember that these mists are very, we have to, we have to remember that the droplet size are very tiny. Okay, basically the half width of, of a human hair. And also too, we have to remember is that to measure these droplet sizes, um, they would be in motion. So somehow I have to freeze these drops in mid air and then compare that drop to one that's produced by a certified nozzle. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So using my camera gear and using a fast uh, flash or, or a speed light as they call it um, I said well maybe I can do that maybe I can freeze the drops in midair and then I can also um, use the photo or the picture and compare it to one from a certified nozzle and then that way I can kind of say hey you know I'm pretty confident that the droplet size produced by these lower cost nozzles are comparable to these other nozzles that are certified by the manufacturer to produce 50 microns. And if I can do that, then I can recommend those nozzles to you with confidence knowing that uh, 50 microns in droplet size are being produced by these nozzles. Now, in doing this, uh, uh, in doing this test, okay, I can also determine the uh, flow rate of the nozzle, which is also important. And then also too, I can determine the, the spray angle or the pattern coming from these nozzles. And based upon that, we can verify and see how these nozzles will perform for us. Another thing too um, about nozzles is that the, the droplet size is determined by the orifice the, by the diameter of the orifice as well as the spray pattern and the spray angle. Okay, so, which you already know if you watch my other videos that the wider the spray angle, basically normally the smaller the droplet size would be. And the reason why is that the velocity of the water leaving the droplets is at a faster speed, which causes the water to separate faster. So that will, um, also decrease the, uh, the droplet size. And then another thing as we know is the orifice size. Now the orifice size is very interesting because if the orifice is too small, you can kind of say, is that, I mean, if the orifice is smaller than what you really need it to be, because smaller orifice will produce smaller droplet size, but if you use a smaller orifice, that means that the likelihood of your nozzles clogging is higher than a nozzle with a, a larger orifice. So it's like a balancing act. We want the, the optimal orifice size that will be as large as possible. Not to say as large as possible, but adequately large enough so that any particles that do build up in your stream can actually pass through and not clog the nozzle but at the same time you want the orifice to be small enough so that it will produce a fine mist um, of a droplet size around 
50 microns. Now, another thing too to keep in mind, when the manufacturer says that it produces 50 microns, it doesn't mean that every water drop coming from that nozzle is 50 microns. Basically, that number means it's the mean average of the drop of sizes, meaning that, meaning that if you were to count the number of drop, see, if you were to take an average of all the drop of sizes coming from the nozzle, they average around 50 microns. That means that some of your droplets will be larger than 50 microns, and some of your droplets will be smaller than 50 microns. But that's okay, because um, as I stated in my other videos, is that the droplet sizes kind of determine, let's, say, let's put it this way, the droplet size being produced by your spray nozzle kind of determines the root structure formation. Meaning that we have more fish bone and fine hair, fine hair roots, or where you have more lateral and tap roots. Okay, so we want like a balance of kind of like both. We want some lateral roots, we want some fish bone roots, and we want some hair bone roots. So by your nozzle producing a spectrum or a range of droplet sizes, that goal will be accomplished. And so, uh, so just remember that that it doesn't mean that your nozzles are producing 50 microns on all their droplets. It just means that the average, on the average, your your nozzles are producing droplet sizes of 50 microns. Now, another thing too you need to keep in mind when I'm doing this is that I got to make sure that I'm comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges. Um, so the plan is that. I will make sure, so the plan is that I will make sure that the, the environment is consistent with each of the tests, meaning that I will try to keep the test at the same temperature and the same humidity environment. Also to, I will keep the test at where the pressure, the water pressure to the nozzles are consistent. And that way when we evaluate and compare our nozzles, um, uh, it would be more um, validated, okay? As I said before, um, I was using a, a speed light to basically to freeze the water drops in midair, and then I would take that and I will blow up the image as much as I can so that I can actually measure the water droplets coming from the spray nozzle. Another thing that I plan to do is to take some human hair and use that as a reference to the size of the droplets because we know that human hair is roughly between 70 and 100 microns in diameter. So if I'm able to take a piece of human hair and um, uh, make it uh, up, so if I'm able to take that piece of hair on the same image as the photo of the uh, droplet sizes, if the drops are larger than the width of the human hair, then we know that the droplets are not 50 microns. But so by using human hair as a reference, this way we can validate, okay, the method that I am using to compare nozzles is dependable, okay, and or it is defensible. That means that if someone comes back and says, hey, you know, this is not really producing well, I compared to a, a diameter of uh, human hair and it's less than, so it, it must be within the 50 microns uh, to supply, uh, to verify. Now, maybe in the future, if someone else has nozzles that they find that are lower cost than what I um, have used in my testing procedure, then, um, I might go ahead and test those as well. I hope you enjoy how we are going to evaluate these nozzles. Here's a picture of one of those shots. Now this series is a two-part series, so stay tuned for part two. I want to pause here and I want to thank you very much for subscribing to my channel. In a very short time, this channel has grown from zero to over 300 subscribers. And I look forward to delivering more information and helping you to be a high-tech gardener.